the, the thing I'm researching at the moment, and a big part of my life shows actually will be talking about black holes. And that's because black holes are the most baffling and interesting things, and I could talk about them forever. Um, but one of the questions that was asked initially by Stephen Hawking, actually, by work he did back in the 70s, was what happens to stuff that falls in? Uh, does the, the information, if you throw a book into a black hole, is the information gone from the universe forever? Mm -hmm. um, he discovered that black holes, and it, this really was uh, what Stephen Hawking is most famous for in physics. He discovered that black holes evaporate away over time. It's called Hawking radiation. And so one day they're gone. So the question is, is the information gone? Right. And for many years, many years, Stephen thought that the information was destroyed in black holes. And then he changed his mind. And now the current view is that, no, the information comes out. And we're pretty sure now, almost completely sure, that information survives. That process of going into a black hole gets radiated out into the universe. And in some sense, it's never lost. Um, but there's, there's, you know, one of the great physicists of the 20th century and 21st century, Stephen Hawking, changing his mind because he got a deeper understanding and more work was done. And that's what science is all about. Yeah. Thank you. Those are great stories. And especially from someone brilliant like yourself and explaining how you change your mind and someone like Stephen Hawking. Um, yeah. Okay, well, then let's talk about black holes because <laughs> I find it fascinating as well. Maybe we'll back up and start with energy, just the just the universal understanding. And maybe this is, I think this is accurate. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> that energy can't be destroyed. It's only transformed. Yep. So everything is energy. Right. So yep. even if a book went in there, it's some form of energy. Is this correct? Yeah. With that in mind, then transformed, could it what could it become? Like what could the things that fall into the black hole become? Presumably it doesn't always have to come out as a book. Right. If we're just using that. example. Well, no. It, so so thing if you think about something like a book um, and then if we wind back, um, how does physics work as we understand it at the fundamental level? It says that if you know everything about something, let's say a book, and then let's say we burn the book, so we set it on fire, then physics says that if we could collect everything, all the gas and all the ashes and everything, and measure everything that came off from that fire perfectly, which is very mm -hmm. hard to do, but if we could do it, mm -hmm. then we could run back time and reconstruct the book. Okay. Um, so given that we know everything about something or, or with a great deal of precision at some moment, we can predict what it's going to do in the future and what it was doing in the past. That's okay. called determinism. Okay. Right? That's central mm -hmm. to science. It's how we, do, how we look at the universe today and try and we model it and run it back in time and forwards in time. And we see the big bang and we can measure the time back and all those things. So the question with black holes is, is that still true? Mm -hmm. So is, if we could collect everything that comes off the black hole when it's evaporated away through this process called Hawking radiation, mm -hmm. and it's just mm -hmm. particles, nothing left, mm -hmm. the black hole's gone. Mm -hmm. Could some omnipotent being, right, in the far future with a huge quantum computer, feed everything in and then reconstruct everything that fell in? And the laws of nature, as we understand them at the basic level, say yes. But the laws of nature also said, as we understood them at the basic level, with a black hole, initially, they said no. So we had a clash, a fundamental clash um, between our, with our laws of nature contradicting themselves, right? essentially. That's the, that was the wonderful thing about black holes. And it turns out that now it seems that, no, that the, ultimately, as the black hole evaporates away, the information that fell in uh, gets imprinted into the radiation that comes off the black hole, which is a really tremendously bizarre thing to happen. Um, and it's really, what it's done is it's challenged us to reassess our understanding of space and time. And, and now the, 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 the consensus view, I think, from the black hole research is that space and time are not fundamental things, that they emerge from something deeper Einstein had this wonderful phrase, something deeply hidden. He said, when you look at nature in detail, you can catch a glimpse of something deeply hidden, which is the deep structure of nature. And it seems that there is such a structure of space and time 
And that deep structure, which is what we call quantum theory, preserves information. So the patterns, the patterns evolve and change over time, but the patterns are always there. And you can always, if you could collect them and you were smart enough, you could run it back and see the patterns in the past. So one of the most fascinating things within science to me is fractals. Mm. Like, I just think fractals is fascinating. I constantly look at the way things are and just wonder what level, like what, what part of the fractal loop we're in. Is it, is our universe completely, is it fractal in nature? I, I think at a deep level, it, it isn't. So fractal, the, there's a great thing. If you go online, you can look at the, the Mandelbrot set, which is this, this um, mathematical structure, ultimately. And, and you, you, can, you can zone in. I, I, when I was little, actually, so I'm being really geeky now, I wrote a computer program to, to draw one. It's a really simple thing. And in this really simple bit of mathematics is this infinitely complex structure. And as you zoom in and in and in, you see the structure again and the structure again and the structure again. So I really recommend you go online and look at Mandelbrot's set and spend an afternoon or an evening zooming in and exploring this bizarre land that's mathematical. Um, so you can go infinitely deep, basically, and carry on and you just see pattern after pattern after pattern repeating itself. Um, the universe, what black holes have told us is that the universe it isn't like that. There's a really weird, strange result from black hole physics. And it's that, so let's say I say to you, how much information in bits, right? So literally in bits of information, like the memory in your phone, how much can I put in some given region of space? So you could look at the region of space in front of you now, just look in front of your nose, look at a little cubic centimeter or something of space, whatever it is, and say, how much information could I fit in there? Um, the answer is that the maximum amount of information you can fit is you keep putting bits in and ultimately the thing collapses into a black hole, right? So there's kind of a limit before you make a black hole and the whole thing collapses. And the amount of information in any given region of space seems to be proportional or actually equal in some sense to its surface area and not its volume. So that's like saying, if I was to ask you how many books can you put in a library, how much information can you fit in a library? You'd say, well, it's got to do with how many books I can fit in. It's to do with the volume of the room. How many books can I get in the room? That's it. Or how many hard disks or whatever it is. But it turns out at a fundamental level, nature seems to say no. It's only about the surface. It's not about the inside at all. And so this is leading us to think that we vastly overestimated the amount of information you can store in any given region of space. Um, and this leads to something called the holographic principle that we could talk about, which is... Um, that's I love that principle. I read the holographic universe the hologram. book and I thought it was fantastic. So a hologram is uh, the basic level. It's a, it's a piece of film, right? So a flat thing. Uh, like a sheet of paper, a two-dimensional thing, with all the information on it necessary to make a three-dimensional image of a thing. And it seems that at a very deep level, the universe is like that. Uh, and people are even, it came from black hole research, but people are even now, although it's not fully understood by any means, beginning to say, well, okay, so that means that there's an equivalent description of us. So me and you and everyone that's listening and watching, there's an equivalent description, which is some, in some sense, and physicists always use that phrase, by the way, when they're waving their hands around, right? In some sense, right? So <laughs> it means we don't fully get that, right? We don't fully understand it. But in some sense, the, 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 the information, our thoughts and everything that we experience is, is equally well represented on a surface surrounding us. So it's almost, it, it's, it's a, and in that sense, you could say that we're holograms. And that's called the holographic principle. And that's really bizarre, but it's coming from research in black holes. Hmm. What part of the black hole? Is that all the information's on the outside? Well, so the problem with a black hole is that from the outside, the thing behaves in a certain way. And that's how we view it, right? So, so we're out, we, we right. see one. There's a, there's a galaxy called M87, for example, about 55 million light years away. And we have a photograph of the black hole in that galaxy. And it's a, a huge black hole, 6 billion times the mass of the sun, supermassive black hole. So we know these things exist. We've got a picture mm -hmm. of one in that galaxy. 
Um, so from the outside, um, they're weird, right? So if if I was to if if I said to you, you go into the journey into the black hole, and I watched you go in. So I sat from afar and watched mm-hmm. you fall in. I would I would never see you cross into the black hole. Uh, you would you would freeze on what's called the event horizon, mm-hmm. and it's actually it, the, from some perspectives, I could I could imagine that you actually were completely incinerated on the event horizon, and all your ashes came out into space, yeah. and I could collect them and I could reconstruct you, right? If I was clever yeah. enough, Humpty um, Dumpty. So I could do that, but yeah, but from your perspective you would fall in across the horizon inside of the black hole. You go into the interior of the black hole. You could float around in there in the interior of the M87 black hole for, I think it's about 35 hours or something, if I remember rightly, before you meet the end of time. So you go to the end of time ultimately in the black hole. So from your perspective, you go in and you end your days at the end of time, which is called the singularity in the black hole. Whereas from the external perspective, you never cross the horizon. So you're saying if you watched it, I wouldn't change. But so what goes in my consciousness, my. No, you would you would go in. There's a thing called the equivalence principle in relativity, fundamental to Einstein's theory, which says that you wouldn't notice. So you you could fall in across the horizon of the black hole into the interior and you would notice nothing. You'd sit there looking at your watch. It would tick at one second per second. You would feel no ill effects at all. In you go. But from the external perspective, you never get in. Um, and uh, that, so the, the, the modern understanding is that both are true. So our universe is constructed in a very strange way where things that you might think are a contradiction, um, actually, it just depends on your point of view, whether you got in or not. Um, but the outcome <laughs> it ultimately is the same. So no contradictions appear. And that's been central to black hole research. Uh, it's got a fancy name. It's called black hole complementarity. And it's broadly speaking thought to be correct now. But it really, it challenges us to think about what we mean by reality. Because it means that our reality is so strange, uh, so much stranger than we could possibly have imagined. Still works, still works. The laws of nature apply, but it's not quite what we expected. <laughs> you know, our common sense is, is, is not a good guide. Thank you.